Welcome back to the channel. I'm outside the White Horse, and today we're going up two Wainwrights. We're going up Blencathra first, and then over to Bannerdale Crags. So let's have a look at the map. Starting off at the White Horse, we go behind the pub and follow the fence line for a gradual ascent. After leaving the fence, this becomes a little steeper before we cross over into the next valley. It's a relatively flat path, and it'll guide us on the correct side as we head towards the tarn and reach Sharp Edge. Sharp Edge is a legendary Grade 1 knife edge scramble. It's a great challenge and an exhilarating walk. It can be dangerous. Because you're using your hands, it's also a good idea to get gloves. Once the ridge is complete, a rocky climb will take us up to the steady walking path. We continue along the route to Blencathra's summit. After admiring the views, we double back and then pass the White Cross and then turn towards Mongrysdale Common on our way to Bandale Crags. Once collecting our second way of the day, we take the grassy path onto the valley floor. We cross over the stream via the bridge and then head towards Souther Fell. When we reach the crest, we move over again into the next valley, then work our way back to the White Horse for some well-deserved refreshments. Right, let's have a look at it. When we're starting off here, we are starting off around the back of the White Horse and you're into the beer garden and then quickly up here and onto the fells. It's quite a steep up to start off with, then we sort of level off. <laughs> and we're working our way just up there to the main path and then we'll follow our way along here. Right, so over this style to start off with. I don't really take photos on the walks, just do the video. So if you want to see photos of this and other photos of the fells, then you can pop onto Alice's Instagram and that'll be in the description for you. Right, what do you think of this one? Steep. <laughs> steep. It is steep, yeah. This is actually going to be our 50th video on the channel. And this is actually the first walk we, we went on together, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, good one to do to mark the occasion. It is steep though. <laughs> <laughs> it is a big style this first one, well the second one. So you've got the pub in the sort of distance there. And you've got these two styles straight away. Thank you. Uh, your options are either to carry on straight up or to follow the fence line. So we're going to follow the fence line. Just take a bit of the height off it. Alright, down here then. The advantage of course of any steep up is you get a nice view out over the valley. There are several paths up to the main path, so it's up to you which you go up really, but I'll put this one in the description for you. Now uh, you've got the view out there over Clough Head and Great Dodd. So, and then back down the valley, last night we stayed in Keswick at Castle Rig Hall campsite. It was 30 odd quid to stay there, which for a tent is, seems like quite a lot. Um, but when you get there, you know why, because it's kind of more like a golf club in the facilities. There's reading rooms there, spacious showers and stuff. So it is, you know, it is worth it if you're going to stay for multiple days and you want good facilities. I so say we just did the night, not been there before, but really good. It was the Lakeland Festival of Light yesterday. If you don't know what that is, then it's where it's the path is completely lit up with people and torches from Keswick Village all the way up to the top of Cat Bells. So I'll show you what that looks like now. And it's quite a sight to see. I think it went on, feels like about quarter past nine or something, yeah. and was on for about an hour with people going up and down. So really interesting to see that. And really got a caught it. Uh, you can join in with it and do it and so it's 12 pounds to do it if you want to do it and it's all for charitable causes so i'll put the charity link in as well if you're interested in contributing toward that and seeing what it's all about i'll see you out to the valley so we've come up with this so far here and then join this path then we're sort of turning back towards ourselves and heading towards the uh main up for the day which is Blencathra. 
So what we've done is we're going to come up here, then round and back on ourselves. If you've got the energy for it, you can just go from the turn and then head straight up. That'll take you to where you want to go. This way just takes a bit of the sting out of it on the altitude. So we're going to sort of snake round a little bit. But no rush on this one. It's not a very long walk. It's not, it's not an all day job. So plenty of time to get round. Just enjoy it. You enjoying it? <laughs> when we get to this corner, I'll just show you the view out. Getting there now. But yeah, you've got cracking valley views as you go up. That's the valley view heading out for us. Back towards Keswick. Woo. It's impressive, yeah? Very impressive views. I'd say there's quite a few ways to get up on this first section. You can, if you want to as well, just follow Coombeck, which is sort of in the valley there and head your way up. But the main thing you want to be sure about is that you end up on the sharp edge side as you do the walk up to Blencathra. Otherwise, you're on the uh, other side of the tarn, you kind of got to go down and up. So, a bit of a pain if you're doing that. Sheepy's there. As I'm looking over here, that's Salber Fell there, which is a Wainwright. And actually, if you come from the car park down towards Munger Isdale, then you can pick that up and then head up here and then pick up Munger Isdale Common, which is over there. We'll see it a little bit later. Uh, I'd say they're both Wainwrights, so you can do them in one circular. I've got another video on it, so I'll put it in description, should you want to see that. Munger Isdale Common for me, in my top 10 worst Wainwrights for boring, boggy, half mile uh, trudges across a flat landscape. So if you want to do that, then <laughs> good luck with it. <laughs> but tell me if you have done it. Actually, it looks a bit more interesting if you come from Munger Isdale itself over the common and then to Blancathra. Might be a better route, but I've not done that. If you have, or you've done it a different way, let me know in the comments. So we're not going to carry on up here because I end up on the wrong side of the tarn. So just taking this sheep track across here. Then we'll join the main path. You can see now on the path that's coming across there, it's going to go level. When we get a bit further up, it is sort of a steady incline. This is going to be our way back as well, so we're going to take that, then that valley route. The pub's at about 250 metres before you start and then we've gone up just about 250 metres now to get to this point. So it's a bit of a steep up, you won't notice it. Now that we're here, it's all looking a bit more gentle. So we're going to follow this round and then head up. You'll see Blaine Cather over there in a sec. If you'd have taken the straight up where I turned, then you'd have come up this path here. And then round. The way I went just takes a little bit of the edge off the climb. All right, so that's our first sight of it over there. Um, just about to pick it out, so that is gonna be sharp edge just there. After quite a steep up, this bit here is a bit of a relief. So it's nice and flat down the valley. Just following the river at the side, and it's uh, got the view of Blencathra just in front, so you can imagine what the walk up is like there. Well, we're heading up here, and then Blencathra's there in front of you, so you can see clearly you've got sharp edge there, and then there's a steep up. I find this one a bit similar to Striding Edge in that all the focus is on doing the edge, uh, which is, you know, challenging itself, but like Helvellum, once you've done the, the edge, you've then got a steep up, which in itself has its own challenges. We're going to come across the river in a minute, and then the sharp edge is uh, quickly in sight from there. Be able to look down for the tarn and see it hopefully glistening today. 
a bit windy today, <laughs> which isn't necessarily the ideal conditions for walking a ridge, but you know, I'm sure it's fine. If you have walked Sharp Edge, then just let me know when you did it and what kind of conditions you were doing it in and what you thought of it. Because I say, I think it's quite a longish one. It's not as long as Crib Gok, which we did a few weeks ago. Uh, I'll put that in the description for you. But that is probably the most testing one that I've been on for a very long time. So yeah, this one, still quite long, definitely testing. Sometimes the question comes up, is it dangerous? And the answer to that is, yeah, it is. Because <laughs> it's a mountain. They weren't put up by the council uh, and they are dangerous. So yeah, just be careful on there and work within your own limits. We're coming up to this and that is Scales Beck and we're gonna go across that and then we'll find sharp edges just up the top there. Uh, once you've completed the the up past sharp edge that's not the top of Lancaster it's further over so we're working our way along the ridge there. What do you think of sharp edge? I like it. You like it? One of our favourites. Uh, and what did you think of that crib gock? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> not a fan of that one. <laughs> no, I'm not. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta try these things haven't you? <laughs> what do you think of this compared to Striding Edge. Um, I think it's a better one. You like it better? Yeah, I think it's a better one. Oh. Oh. This is Scales and we're just heading up to the top there. We do need to cross over this. So here we go. <laughs> Pick a path. Whoop. It's alright. Yeah, that's all right. I think that's the only river we need to cross today. Except further down, but there are bridges on that, so, you know, nothing to worry about there. Okay, so, got this little bit of a incline. Then we'll be quickly on to Sharp Edge. Little beetle friend there, working his way across. Hello. There we go, there's the run off in the last couple of days. Bit of a steep up in it. <laughs> That's a tricky one. Nice. There we go. Go around this corner and then we'll be able to see the tarn. If we would have carried on up that road from earlier, you'd have ended up up there. So it's like the wrong side of the tarn, you'd have to come down. Not to do this. It's that a bit of a pain. So yeah, just make sure you're on the right side of the tarn so you can get up sharp edge that way. Blaine Cathra is a Wainwright and in the Wainwright books it's just referred to it as a lot of people do as Old Saddleback so that's a more traditional name for it and that's because it's sort of hump shape in the valley and how it sits but as we come around here there you go again we've just got the ridge there in our views looks like a few people on there today Couple of sheepies down there, and a bit of grass and a drink. This is Scales Tower then, this sits at 600 metres. And um, we started at 250, so quite a climb up to this point. So our next job, working our way up here, then onto Sharp Edge, then across to the summit of Blancathra. We're leaving the town now and heading our way up. The wind's coming in gusts, it's about 25 to 30 knots, so just gonna have to be a bit careful at the top. Uh, obviously, if you get still a day, then I would go with that. Alison's been up here twice, I've been up here quite a few times. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, just be careful because it is a ridge and you can go off. There was unfortunately a fatality on Helvellyn a uh, week before last, so, and that was reasonable conditions, so that just shows you, you know, you've got to be careful on these things, can't take it for granted. I guarantee you these guys here want to do sharp edge, but they've come up the wrong path. So they're going to have to come all the way down here and all the way back up. So as I say, just make sure when you're coming up, you're coming up on the right hand side of the tarn. As I say, the tarn's around 600 metres. Sharp edge, it does obviously ascend, but it's around about 700 metres. So this little incline here, about 100. And then we can start working our way along. bit now just starting to make our way up there we go then I'm gonna go around this way for a change so that's the town looking back again different ways on but as long as you get on that's the main thing all right there's a little bit of wind on the mic as I come up but I'm just gonna have to do my best for you if you're not so sure about doing this because of conditions like wind and stuff it's this path on the left you can go up but I just wanted to show it to you so anyway, we're going to pump up here and give it a go. That's how I look back down to the town. So we've come up here, got onto the rocky stuff, and then we're up along the ridge. Then there's that steep climb at the end. edge then, here we go. The wind today, as I say, it's quite gusty, so it's been a little bit aware of it. It's died down a little bit for the moment. Just take your time on this one. It's not wet today underfoot, so that's good for me. You have got gloves and Alison's got them on. Not a bad idea. down there to the right if you wish it but I'm sticking to the tops just for a bit of fun. Whee! There you go. This bit's a little flat section you come to. There's Alison. What do you think of that bit? It's alright. <laughs> it's alright. Yeah. <laughs> That's the look out you get from here anyway, should you uh, wish to not look at your feet or hands. <laughs> and that's the summit of Blencath was over that way. Yeah, so more than halfway, gonna complete this. Then we've got that quite steep climb going up, which I always think is the trickiest bit. If you have done this, then just let me know what you thought of it. There's some smooth stones up here, where there's been many a boot. So, of the edges you've been up, which do you think is the trickiest? Let me know in the comments.
that's it there going forward. So there's this little down to do here. Then you're onto that next platform. Then the climb. If you are doing this, it is a grade one scramble, which, uh, although that sounds severe, is the easiest of all scrambles. <laughs> Easy to say. If you're scrambling, the best thing is three points of contact. So ideally, two feet in a hand or two hands and a feet. Uh, never use your knees, because if you slip and you've caught your knee, that's going to be a problem for you. Because you can take your kneecap off. Whee! Right, a little smooth flat rock here. There you go, you're right there. Good. When we did Crib Gok the other week, I wasn't holding the camera above my head, and I think it makes a difference for showing you how severe the edge is. So hopefully you get some idea, if you've not been up here, what it's like, and if you have been up here, maybe it reminds you. Right, so, this little down, and then we are getting there. And again, when I did crib gawk, I felt like I should have been wearing gloves really, because my hands were a bit sore at the end of it. Sometimes speed your friend There's the intrepid Allison there making her way up It's good going Oh, there we are <laughs> That in effect then is sharp edge done but like Striding Edge on Hell Helen, when you get to the end, there's a climb to do. So, get to this bit. There we go. You get to this little gully bit, and then <laughs> you're faced with that. So, up to the top of that, then it really flattens out, and we're walking across the top. up this there's several ways you can head up but I tend to favour just going a little bit on the left hand side and then heading. It is steep though so again if you've got gloves not a bad idea. no doubt it looks steep. <laughs> there are quite grippy handholds, so it's actually okay if you use the mountaineering. This gully here is one of the safest places to come up, so just follow it, you can follow that line. But this central gully, if you go up it, it's just a bit out of the wind, so not too bad squeeze up there. You can tell actually because there's some smooth rocks where everyone's worked way up. Also on the left there is this path you can go which is quite easy. Touch a bit further around, then comes up that way. Or we can head up here.
Look at that, it's like Spider Woman. <laughs> yeah, keep. This last bit. And foot holds, hand holds. Keep it all going. Different for different people, but for me, when I get momentum, I just like to keep on it if I can. So, which you can do, which depends on experience level, obviously. There you go. There you go, that's good going. Right, now I've got this far, I see a bit of grass appearing, and it really rounds off to the top. And it's a path walk, and we're at the top of Lancaster. Once you've done the sharp edge and the climb, then you're on this relatively straight path on the way to Blancastra. There it is, we just work our way along. The summit's just over there, with a load of people on it. <laughs> That's the view out though from here. That's your reward. You come up the other side of the town, which is there. This is a path you can take, so you don't actually have to do this um, jab edge at all. You can just go up this end and then back down past the town there. Just depends how confident you are with it. There's lots of ways up Blancathra. I've got another video on the back of Blancathra which takes you on the way max around there. So if you want to have a good look at that one, I'll put it in the description for you. We're going to the summit now. And we'll be able to see views out down to Cat Bells and Don't Water. So from here looking out, you've got Don't Water, Cat Bells will be at the side there, and then the Newlands Watershed. Uh, Keswick's down there, and over this way, Fellmere, and then the edge of the fells, and then we're out towards the plains. From here, we're going to work our way over to Banadit or Crags, and we're going to pass Mungrysdale Common, which is a Wainwright. <laughs> Let me know if you've done that. Because it's basically from here, it's like a half mile trudge over to a pile of stones and then come back. So, not my favourite, <laughs> but you know, if you're doing the way rights, you've got to do the way rights. So, <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> anyway, Bannerdale Crags is our second way right for today. And uh, got some good views off because it's a crag, so it's quite a steep drop off. And then views out to the valley. So, we've just come from the summit over there, We're working our way down. And past this curve marker, fairly easy to follow this route. Then there's another curve marker. There is actually a feature on here we need to just cover as well, which is just here. Oh, the, the, stone, the stone crosses, yeah. Blank Hathra is referred to as Saddleback, which is supposedly an old name for Hilltop and the white cross is on here, on the back. And that is um, a memorial to an unknown walker that died here. Anyway, I'll find out why, I'll find the information for you and I'll pop it in the description for you to read. All right, so working our way forward and we're going to Bannerdale Crags. Now it's just going past, down to Mungrai, still common there. Excuse the wind on the mic if there's any. And we're just following our directions over here. The wind's really picked up, so I've had no chance to get the drone up here because it's probably over 35 knots, I think. So we hit this little cairn here, and then we're going to turn to face Mongrise Little Common, which is just there, and then we're heading down.
on the walk off. There's quite a bit of scree down here, it's a bit slippy, so just watch your footing if you're coming down here. What we're doing now then is we'll work our way around here, follow that little path up there, and then our second wine right is just over there. Just behind me there you can see how craggy the mountain face is when you go in towards the sharp edge. That's us walking down, so you can see it's quite a straightforward grassy path. So not like we experienced earlier on, and certainly not as steep. So this bit of the route's fairly grassy and gentle, nothing like we saw in the first half, so you kind of got an easier back end to the walk. That's the impressive view to the side there. So that's the valley walk we did before, and then we're up to Sharp Edge, and that's it going across and the climb is up there. Over here you can probably see some of the purple heather on this side. And I was up over there, again, probably about this time last year. It takes you up to High Pike, so when we were doing the uh, Cumbria Way the other week, you get up to High Pike and then you drop down and that is the end of day four. So yeah. That one, I'll put a link into it, it is just sort of across the tops there, down. When you walk in to cross the valley sides, it does get a little bit steep when you're going down. So that's it heading down for us. You can see there's a bit of a landslip going on there. Woo. The sun's giving it a go, look at that. Working its way across. From here you really get the look back of where we've been so far on the hike. As you can see from the valley walk, walked up onto Sharp Edge, lots of Cathra, then back round here, and then we're now following this to Bandale Crags. What do you think of the walk so far? Yeah, good. Good. It's a good walk. It's a crag, it's a sharp off, and it really marks the end of the fells on this side. And you get a good look out towards the valley and the well, the plateau below here. We're nearly at the top of this now. It climbs about 100 meters from the dip down there, and then you're at the summit. That's the 100 meter climb pretty much done from the dip back there, and we're at the top. That's one marker, but there's another marker further on. Boom, boop. Watch past the cairn. We're approaching the lookout point here. And this is, it always looks like a chair to me. There you go, that's marking the view out. Have a seat. What do you think? Uh, good, so there's the, the valley view. You see you're at the real edge of the fells. There you go. And then if you look back towards the actual mountains, very different view altogether. So top of Lancaster up there. From here we're going to head back to the pub. But if you want to do another way right, then Bow Scale Fell is just up there. And then you can go to the pub. <laughs> but we are going down here now. From the seat, we're going to make our way over here. There's a lower path that goes there, but you don't want that one for going straight across here, just with Blancathra there on our right. Final walk down like this, so really grassy, and we'll find our way down into the valley there and towards the pub. We're a little further down, and I just wanted to show you this. So, again, I know I've shown you before, but 
So that is as you head up towards the um, tarn, the tarn just here, then you work along the way and up through Sharp Edge, do the climb, cross, and that's the very top of Blencath just over there. So yeah, good to see the whole walk when you're walking around down here, down here, and then down into the valley. Yeah, it's this big old walk, and how far is it in total, do you say? Yeah, just over six miles, so, you know, it's not a massive one. Yeah, it's definitely not took us all day. It's like half a day. Yeah, so it's took us about half a day. Uh, so, yeah, really good one. I feel like you've definitely achieved something, though, if you've done Sharp Edge. So if you've done this, you picked up two Wainwrights, and you picked up Sharp Edge for bragging rights, really. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely a good one to do. It's only took us about half a day. It's fairly quick. It's just over six miles for the lot. Right, let's carry on down, then. Sheepies now as we're coming down. Me and them are walking down. We'll hit this bridge in a minute. And then we'll follow in the uh, hill round. And then that'll take us back to where we want to be at the start point, the White Horse. If you enjoyed the video, then it helps me out if you click on the like. And um, thanks to everybody who's putting comments in and liking and sharing. That really helps out the channel. So yeah, if you enjoyed it and you can do that, that'd be great. Getting down to the pub in a minute, so have a think what you want in there. I'll see you in there. Right, and just this somewhere there. It's a bridge. Oh, it's a bit mucky down here to walk around. Hmm. Might make that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Once we've gone past the stream and the bridge, we're just going to get into the other side of the valley because there's a bit of an up and a down, and we are going down here. So this one will take us back to where we started at the White Horse. It's a bit rocky again there. Whoop! What we're doing down here then is we're just following it down, and there's a little bit of an up there. So just going up that and then we should be able to see the white horse. Eight. The reason I'm coming down this way is it's just a bit gentler. So there are some people up here and they're uh, trying to wear their way down, which is essentially the very steep up where we went and they're struggling. <laughs> they look like they're on the bumper to me. Once we've gone up here, we're around the back, we'll have the pub in sight, and then we're coming in the back gate again, then we'll get a pint. All right. back of the pub now and heading in so I'll see what they've got in there thanks for watching the video all the way to the end and I'll catch you on the next one Thank you.